This is the new Hyundai Kona Electric. Hyundai has been selling cars in the UK since 1982, but back then it was difficult to think of the brand significantly changing the face of the automotive industry. But with the launch of this new car, it's helped to do exactly that. The Kona Electric is a fully electric SUV that is very similar to the hugely impressive and slightly bigger Kia e-Niro with the same battery size and electric motors. That means the Kona Electric offers a whopping real-world range that's bigger than some electric cars that are twice as expensive. So this should be yet another electric car that moves the market towards the mainstream. But what's it like compared to rivals like the Nissan Leaf, Renault Zoe and Volkswagen e-Golf? Well, in this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the Hyundai Kona Electric. And if you want to buy a Kona Electric or any other new car, go to whatcar.com and look for the new car buying section where you can find the best deals available to you. And please subscribe to our channel. You may already be familiar with the Kona name, and that's because you've been able to buy a Hyundai Kona with a petrol or diesel engine for quite a while now. But now, this electric car is new to the lineup, and to help make it stand out from the other models, they've made some tweaks to the exterior design, and these are the key changes. Well, for starters, there's no fuel tank, obviously, but the charge port is located here on the nose of the car, right next to the Hyundai badge. There's also no exhaust, and you can notice that the grille is closed. And these 17-inch alloys are exclusive to the Kona Electric. The bumpers and spoiler have been tweaked for aerodynamics, too. So, is this now the best-looking electric car on sale in this sort of price range? Well, let us know what you think. Click on the banner in the top right-hand corner and tell us what's the best-looking electric car. Is it the Hyundai Kona Electric? BMW i3, Kia e Nero, or Nissan Leaf. The interior looks different as well, but you still won't be blown away by the quality of the materials. At least it's all put together pretty robustly and it all feels strong and sturdy. And the center console has been given a lift in styling compared to the standard Kona too. And this material on the steering wheel feels a bit plasticky. However, there is a really good range of adjustment in the steering wheel and the driving position generally is very good. Another real plus is that adjustable lumbar support comes as standard on all Kona electrics. Visibility over the shoulder and out the back is a bit more restricted because of the chunky rear pillars, but you do at least get a reversing camera and rear parking sensors as standard on all models. And actually compared to a Leaf, visibility out the front is noticeably better in the Kona because the Leaf has chunkier pillars at the front. A 7-inch touchscreen comes as standard on the entry-level model, but on the Porsche trims you get this 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system. The system itself is pretty easy to use, fairly responsive, and another good thing about this is that it's actually mounted quite high up on the dashboard, so that means when you're driving it's easily within reach and you don't have to take your eyes too far from the road to help control it. Space up front is really good, even if you're over six foot you won't have a problem getting in a comfortable driving position. And there's also quite a lot of storage options around the front as well. So let's do a quick tour of those. The door pockets down here are a little bit shallow but still big enough for a water bottle. On the centre console you've got this compartment which is nice and wide, deep, good amount of space there. Just in front of it I guess this smaller place somewhere for your key, maybe your phone two cup holders and in front of that you have this hidden storage compartment which has some wireless phone charging, a USB port and an aux input as well. But the hidden secret of the centre console is that underneath it you have quite a significantly sized storage compartment as well. Now obviously it's not covered so you can't put big bulky things in there because they might slide around and fall out on the move but you've got a 12 volt socket and certainly enough room for wallets, keys and phones. Space in the back is actually exactly the same as you get in a petrol or diesel Kona, but that doesn't mean it's impressive. So it doesn't feel all that cramped back here. Headroom is okay and similar to what you get in a Nissan Leaf, but the Leaf has significantly more legroom. But if you need a big boot, then the Kona Electric isn't the electric car for you. It's the same size boot as the standard Kona, but we only managed to fit four carry-on size suitcases into the boot of it. In a Renault Zoe, we got six, and in a Nissan Leaf, we got seven. But there is, you can see, a charging cable that you have to carry around in the back, but you get this handy bag. You get a bit of underfloor boot storage here, and underneath this, you can see there's somewhere to keep the three-pin charger in the boot as well. But it's annoying you don't get another place to store your other charging cable. You do get 60-40 split folding rear seats as standard. And when folded down, the Kona's seat backs lie flat and flush with the boot floor. There's no lip to speak of at the boot entrance either. But just how far can the Kona Electric go on a full charge? And can it really make any financial sense? These are the key things you need to know about buying and owning a Hyundai Kona Electric. 
There are two versions of the Kona Electric available. There's one with a 39 kilowatt hour battery and one with a 64 kilowatt hour battery. And that's the car that we're driving today. Now the benefit of going for the bigger battery is that yes, it's quicker, but actually the range that it can cover on a full charge is much bigger as well. So this is the important bit. How far can these cars really go in the real world? Well, in our real range testing, which you can read more about by clicking on the banner in the top right hand corner of your screen, we used the 39 kilowatt hour Kona Electric in a test and it managed to cover 158 miles on a full charge. And that's more than a Zoe and Leaf managed in the same test. And the 64 kilowatt hour Kona managed a staggering 259 miles on a full charge, which is more than Jaguar I-Pace can do, which is a much more expensive car. And so for that reason, the extra performance, but mainly the extra range, the 64 kilowatt hour Kona is our pick of the lineup. The Kona Electric is still expensive to buy though, more so than an equivalent fuel-powered family car, but there are savings to be made elsewhere. For example, you'll spend a lot less on electricity than you will on fuel, and you won't spend a penny on road tax. You can use a Type 2 charging cable for the Kona Electric, and if you have a 64 kilowatt hour battery, then from a 7 kilowatt home charging point, it will take nine and a half hours to charge it from empty. If you have a 39 kilowatt hour battery, then it will take just over six hours to charge it from empty. If you're in no rush whatsoever, you can plug it in to the wall using a three pin domestic plug, but that will take three times as long. If you want to rapid charge the Kona, you'll need to find a CCS charging point. There are more than a thousand of these dotted around the UK. A 0-80% rapid charge takes around 75 minutes, no matter which battery option you go for. The Kona Electric hasn't specifically been crash tested by Euro NCAP, but the regular Kona has, and achieved the full 5-star rating. All trim levels come with automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and lane keep assist, while the top two trims add blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Now, what's it like to drive? First, let's talk about the two batteries that you can buy. So, the cheaper 39 kilowatt hour battery, that gets 134 brake horsepower. And if you go for the 64 kilowatt hour battery, then that gets 201 brake horsepower, which is the same as what you get in the Kia e Nero, but it's more than anything else this side of a 60,000 pound Jaguar I-Pace. And even if you go for the lesser powered 39 kilowatt hour battery, then it still feels pretty nippy. But the 64 kilowatt hour version that we're in now is really rapid. In fact, you have to be a bit careful when you're pulling away at low speeds because it does have a tendency to spin up the front wheels if you put too much power down. It offers typical electric car performance. There's no waiting for the revs to rise before maximum performance is delivered. Just tread on the accelerator pedal and the car flings itself down the road. Now, like in other electric cars, if you lift off the accelerator, you can feel the car slowing down quite quickly. And what it's doing there, it's the regenerative brakes harvesting energy to replenish the battery. And in the Kona Electric, you can decide how hard the car slows down when you lift off the accelerator. And you can do that using the paddles behind the wheel here. So in some petrol and diesel cars, steering wheel paddles help you change gears. But in electric cars, often they're there to help choose the level of regenerative braking you want. The lowest setting for regenerative braking is zero. And to get to zero, you can use the paddle on the right of the steering wheel and you just knock it down, level zero. So that means when you lift off the accelerator, it doesn't really slow you down that much at all. But if you want a bit more of that and you want to harvest more energy for the battery, then you can use the paddle on the left of the steering wheel and you can put it up to level three. And when you're on three, when you lift off, the car does really slow down much more noticeably. Now it doesn't do quite what the Nissan Leaf does. In a Leaf, the regenerative braking can be so hard that it brings the car to a complete stop. So you can basically drive with one pedal just using the accelerator. You can't quite do that to the same extent in the Kona, but it's still useful that you're able to adjust the level of regenerative braking. In terms of handling, if you approach a corner at speed, then you'll notice that actually the Kona Electric leans less through it than a Nissan Leaf but really on balance, the Leaf is still the better handling electric car. And that's mainly thanks to its steering, which is more accurate. As for the ride, the Kona Electric does kind of jostle you around more. So you can probably see that driving along this pockmarked A road here, I am being thrown around a little bit more in the cabin, but it's not to an annoying or an uncomfortable extent, but it's just that the Leaf rides a little bit better. And actually the E-Nero is more comfortable too. But remember, it's the E-Golf that sets the benchmark for ride comfort for electric cars at this price point. 
So brilliant performance, an exceptionally long range, and it's pretty well priced for an electric car too. All of those things mean the Kona Electric is one of the best electric cars that you can buy. So for much more on the Kona Electric, including our extended written review of it and all of its key rivals, head to whatcar.com. And if you want to buy a new car, then when you're on whatcar.com, go to the new car buying section and see how much money we could save you. Remember, it could be thousands without the need for any awkward haggling. And if you've enjoyed the video, then please like it. If you've got any questions about the car, then leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to speed with the latest new car reviews.